Now you know what the terminals non-terminals are and how to start the grammar. We should give a name to the program something like while loop and define while, brackets, semicolon, curly brackets as terminals. Condition and the statements are non-terminals. Here it is the BNF grammar. While loop can be condition and the body which not inside curly brackets or a body which inside curly brackets. Now let's look at the syntax graph. This is a little bit complicated. In order to draw it correctly, we should know how the loop works. There are three situations. When condition false straightly it exit. When it is true, go through one statement end with semicolon and exit. Again when it is true, open curly brackets go thorough several statements and exit. But we should consider every time it exit it comes to where Let's take another example. Here it has shown the go-to statement now let's write its grammar. Starting as go-to we define the program at LHS then go-to is a terminal VM open a bracket inside that there is non-terminal parameter list, then the comma and non-terminal integer. Since the parameter list is a non-terminal, we should define it again. Parameter list can be either one integer or integer followed by a parameter list. Then the integer is a non-terminal and again we want to define it. Integer can be either one number or number followed by a integer. Number also a non-terminal. Then number can be any number between 1 to 9. Now this is the corresponding syntax graph. As early while loop syntax graph we should know correctly how it is running. After starting as go to, it can have either one or many integers inside the brackets, integer and get exit. The way we identify the ambiguity is by drawing the parse tree. Now we know how to draw a parse tree. If we can draw more than one parse trees for a certain grammar that means the written grammar is ambiguous. When we apply the example to the grammar, it looks like this. sentence is defined as expr in above grammar. Then we should apply expr plus expr for expr because the example we have taken is starting with x plus y same as the expr we can apply the matching expr or id according to get the same example we have taken. Do you think this grammar is ambiguous? Let's find it out. In order to find the ambiguity we'll draw the parse trees. We can draw two parse trees. How can this happen? This happens because there isn't any operator precedent. We can either multiply y by z and add it to x like this or add x and y and then multiply it by z. This is why we can draw two parse trees and the grammar is ambiguous. We hope that you have got a clear idea about BNF syntax, its rules, how to write BNF grammar, how to draw syntax graphs and how to know whether your grammar is ambiguous or not, thorough this video. Now 
now we look at the extended Bacchus norform EBNF. It is a family of metasyntax notations used for expressing context-free grammars, that is, a formal way to describe computer programming languages and other formal languages. They are extensions of the basic Bacchus norform BNF metasyntax notation. Let's see what are the EBNF learning goals. Know the syntax of EBNF. Be able to read, write and understand EBNF grammar. Convert BNF grammar into EBNF grammar and vice versa. Draw syntax graphs using EBNF grammar. EBNF is a code that expresses the grammar of a computer language. An EBNF consists of several syntax. They are shown here from their usage in notation for the syntax such as definition, concatenation, termination, alternation, option, repetition, grouping, terminal string, comment, special sequence and exception. Now let's see how to convert BNF grammar into eBNF grammar. Let's look an example on BNF grammar. This is about a expression. It says list of lists is either minus number or number. And a number is either and digits or digits followed by digits with a dot. Then a digits is a digit or a digit followed by digits. Finally, it says digit is a 0 to 9 number. Now let's write EBNF grammar to the above example. The EXPR can be a negative or positive number. Then here the negative or positive number can be a decimal value or a non-decimal value. With EBNF we can write the first three lines in the previous BNF example from a single line of EBNF grammar. Let's look a simple example. This is again about the EXPR. It says EXPR is digits and digits is one digit or either digit followed by digits. It can be written by a one line of EBNF as follows. Now let's see what are the advantages of EBNF over BNF. The BNF had the problem that options and repetitions could not be directly expressed. Instead, they needed the use of an intermediate rule or alternative production defined to be either nothing or the optional production for option, or either the repeated production or itself, recursively, for repetition. The same constructs can still be used in eBNF. The BNF used the symbols for itself, but did not include quotes around terminal strings. This prevented these characters from being used in the languages, and required a special symbol for the empty string. In eBNF, terminals are strictly enclosed within quotation marks. The angle brackets for non-terminals can be omitted. BNF syntax can only represent a rule in one line, whereas in eBNF a terminating character, the semicolon, marks the end of a rule. Furthermore, eBNF includes mechanisms for enhancements, defining the number of repetitions, excluding alternatives, comments, etc.
It should be noted that EBNF is not more powerful than the BNF. As a matter of principle, any grammar defined in EBNF can also be represented in BNF though representations in the latter are generally more protracted.